Hi, welcome to the channel. While the built-in photos app in iOS is free and much improved, you might have experienced situations where a more capable photo editor was needed. And how about using the iPad for photo editing? There is something liberating about going out, relaxed in your chair, with just your iPad, doing actual productive work. I remember when people were saying the iPad was just a consumption device for viewing photos, not for professional editing. Well, times have changed. It's great to see companies invest more time in creating truly useful apps for the iPad. So today, I'll be reviewing an app called Affinity Photo from a company called Serif. It's crazy to think that this app was just launched in 2017. So in three short years, they were able to create a very powerful app. So in this Affinity Photo review, I'm going to talk about eight unique and useful features. I'll be talking about features which differentiate Affinity Photo from the Free Photos app and other iPad photo editing apps. As of this writing, Affinity Photo is around 1999 USD, and it's great to see a company not follow the trend of relying on a subscription model. I hope at the end of the video, you can be a better judge of whether it's worth its price. So let's get right into this. So number one is selections. So most photo editors are limited to making adjustments to the entire photo. However, Affinity Photo is unique in that it supports selections. Just like Photoshop on the desktop, you can apply your edits on parts of an image. So to demonstrate this, I'll blur the background of this photo to give it a bokeh effect. So to do selections, you can use the Smart Selection tool under the Selections persona. So simply drag your finger on parts of the image that need to be selected. It has a magnetic feature so that it'll figure out the borders of the image. You can add or subtract from the selection, and you can even use a two-finger tap to undo. And what's nice about this implementation for iPad, you can pinch and zoom to help you be more accurate um, and see better. And you can also adjust the brush size. And as you can see, it works pretty fast. Serif's graphics technology is superb. If you've used other photo editors, you know that this type of processing can lag the iPad. Another bonus is they have a refine selection tool which works with hair and other difficult to select areas. If you're interested, I'll create a separate video on the details of using selections. Give a comment if you're interested in that. So once selected, you can apply the blur tool or the blur filter. So in this case, I'm going to be using a lens blur. And there you have it, okay? The before and the after. So as you can see, the results work great. I'm not aware of other iOS photo editors that allow this. So I'm very impressed with this feature. So number two is adjustment layers. Whenever you apply an adjustment, like change exposure or change saturation of an image, Affinity Photo creates what's called an adjustment layer. Two things you need to know about adjustment layers. Number one, they're non-destructive, so it doesn't change the underlying photo. And number two, you can paint black over the layer to mask out certain parts of the image. So just like selections, you can pick and choose which parts you want to change, but also you can control the strength by painting it with a less dark shade. To demonstrate this, I'll adjust this image in this case, the sky looks good to me, but I want to adjust the bottom half of the image, which is too dark in shadow. So for this, I'll use the brightness tool. So I'm just going to drag the slider. was available only on desktop apps but now you can have it right on the iPad right and in this case I just use my finger but you could have also used uh, the Apple pencil um, to make something more refined so that is adjustment layers number three is raw editing 
If you like to shoot in RAW, you'll be glad to know that Affinity Photo has a comprehensive tool set for editing RAW. You can see from this image that this is a RAW file, so it's indicated right at the top. So you can see here if you tap on the adjustments button, you can see the panel for adjusting RAW and it is pretty comprehensive. So you can adjust exposure, the black point, brightness, white balance, and even clarity. So in this case, I'm gonna adjust the shadows because it looks underexposed. You can see how nicely it brings out the detail, right? As you expect from a raw file. And I'll just adjust the highlights as well because it's a bit too bright. And you can also adjust the vibrance and uh, white balance and all of that stuff. So if you're done, you have to click on the develop persona to be able to export it as a JPEG. Okay, so number four is HDR from one image. In Affinity Photo, this option is called the tone persona, but I'll be calling it HDR from one image because that's what I think it is. Instead of merging tones from three separately taken exposures as a normal HDR is, all the tones here are coming from a single image. And so you can get very nice effects, very stunning effects. So here I'm gonna tap on the tone persona. And there. And so if I tap on the adjustments, you will see the adjustment sliders for the tone persona. And just like any HDR, I can adjust the local contrast. And that's typically what you'd expect with HDR. And you can see the nice looking HDR-ish effect. And of course you can control whether you want it to be over the top or you want it to be more natural. And if you saw my video on using HDR with Affinity Photo for iPad, uh, this is exactly the same, uh, the same process. For those who are familiar with Lightroom, Clarity is an important tool which is used to give pop to an image by enhancing the midtones. Despite this, not many photo editors have an implementation of Clarity. Photo certainly doesn't have it, and in fact, I'm not aware of any other editor which includes a Clarity feature. Affinity Photo though has a great implementation of Clarity adjustments, and it works similar to what you expect in Lightroom. So here's an example, let's just do a quick Clarity adjustment for this. So this is under the Sharpen filter, and basically you just have to tap uh, clarity as one of the options and so once you uh, you tap that you're going to see so you have to drag on this clarity circle below and you can see it'll be able to adjust the clarity you can see that it becomes much more um, much more detailed so here's another example again doing the same thing I'm just gonna look for the sharpen um, sharpen filter and then just tap on clarity as one of the options and let's just, as you can see, just drag on the circle, the clarity circle, and you can see now that you give it that nice pop into the image. You now, I should add more clarity. If you ever take photos of tall structures with a wide angle, you probably notice that you get a pyramid-like effect where the building or the structure will taper right at the top, just like this photo here. So you can see that the building, because this is a little bit of a wide angle, you can see it tapering, you not know, like a, something like a pyramid-like effect. And this becomes more pronounced as your, as your lens is wider. So the good news is if you don't like this effect, you can actually do some adjustment here. And this is under the lens distortion adjustment. So again, it's just a filter here. Um, and so you just have to choose distortions. Okay, so you have to choose distortions and then you basically have to choose um, so basically here you have to choose a perspective yeah and then you basically you're gonna get this uh, some handles the square thing with handles and you just basically have to drag it around such so that to counteract the effect of the distortion already built in and the latest update of photos does have noise reduction as well however the implementation of affinity photo is much more useful because you can control not just the grain but also the color noise separately let's have as an example this image 
right? So this was taken actually in a very dark scene and I just brightened it up a bit. But because it was such a dark scene, a lot of detail and a lot of noise is present in the shadows. So if you actually zoom in, so actually if you zoom in, you can see all the color noise, right? And that is present in very high ISO situations. So again, you just basically have to go to the filter for noise, under noise and noise reduction, or slide over or drag over color, as I'm doing here. And you can see, just like magic, all the color is gone, right? With just that one slide, right? Now, of course, a lot of this grain is still there, but you can also reduce that if you want to. So let's just reduce that. And that's under the luminance. So I suppose this is called luminance noise. And there you have it. So it will have that nice blurring effect, which you can control. You don't want it to be overly blurred because it will make the image soft. But a good noise reduction will actually um, blur only those relevant parts and keep those which need to be sharp, sharp. So it, if, if it's smart, it will still look good. So in this case, I think that uh, Affinity Photo has done a really good job. Now, of course, certain parts of this app I believe could use some improvement and I just want to point out two. The first one would be I'd hope to see some improvement on the individual color adjustment feature. In Lightroom, you can actually adjust the red, green, cyan and adjust the saturation and the hue of those colors. Now that feature is really important for me but from my experience with Affinity Photo, their implementation doesn't work as well or as predictably or as reliably as a Lightroom's or Pixelmator photo. So that's one thing I hope um, they can improve uh, and that would be that would really complete the app I believe if they have that feature well done. Uh, the second thing I hope they would improve if they can simplify the user interface. I believe the learning curve is actually pretty steep compared to Lightroom or even to their other competitor uh, Pixelmator photo. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you like what you heard, please do consider helping out the channel by liking and subscribing or commenting. So till the next video, happy shooting!